Kira Kilpatrick was born in September of 2000, a healthy baby girl who weighed seven pounds, 11 ounces, and delighted her parents by arriving a week early. This was their first child, and they were not sure what to expect. She loved books, but she didn't really like look at faces like I saw my niece do. And she didn't really play with the overhead mobiles um, like I saw my niece do either. But you know, there's a wide range of normal, so I didn't think of anything of it. She didn't crawl, but on May 27th, at the age of eight months, she began to walk. The following day, she suffered a seizure. I just told my wife something's wrong, something's wrong. She's turning blue, she's shaking. My wife was in the shower. And she came out and we called 911. The next few months were challenging. Doctors tried several drugs to prevent additional seizures. Some worked, but the side effects were troubling. We called it sleepy, weepy, and tippy. She had just taken her first steps, and suddenly she couldn't walk anymore, and that's all she had wanted to do. She worked so hard to get, start walking, and it was so sad to see her that way, and she'd you know, be crying more, and it just broke my heart. For a year and a half, Kira was seizure-free, but in 2004, she was back in the emergency room, seizures coming one after another in what doctors call a seizure cluster. A single seizure in and of itself is bad enough. Uh, it comes out of the blue, it's unexpected, it, we can't really anticipate when it's going to happen. But then when these unfortunate families actually have a family member with seizure clusters and that first seizure occurs, we don't know what direction that cluster is going to go. So could that cluster actually stop with appropriate intervention or is it going to spiral out of control and result in a hospital admission and many times a prolonged hospital admission? Dr. Joseph Sullivan, director of the Pediatric Epilepsy Center at the University of California, San Francisco, diagnosed Cura with a genetic condition called PCDH19 epilepsy. There's an important gene that is critical for normal brain function, and when that gene isn't working, you can actually have many different symptoms of abnormal brain function, one of which is seizures, but other signs such as learning problems, reading problems, language problems, and probably in its most severe form, the true autistic type picture. Often patients with PCDH19 epilepsy suffer seizures in clusters that can last for days or weeks and do not respond well to available medications. Dr. Sullivan advises caregivers to devise a customized plan for coping with them. It's very important to have a seizure emergency plan because there are so many different places that we go with her. There are so many different people who are involved in her care when we are not around um, that need to know what to do in case of a seizure. Finding the right medications may prove difficult. Kira, who's tried two dozen drugs, is still searching for something to stop her seizures. It's very challenging to figure out the best medication regimen to stop seizure clusters, uh, mainly because uh, these children are seizing, and so therefore the way that we give them medication is extremely important. Because they often can't take medications by mouth, we're, we're limited to the medications that can be given with other routes of administration. That's where the PCDH19 Alliance comes in working to raise awareness and money for research. It also organizes an international conference every other year so researchers can share their findings with doctors, patients, and their families. Researchers believe that PCDH19 affects one in 10 girls that begin having seizures before the age of five. Seizures kill more people per year than breast cancer, which I don't think people realize. I don't think they realize how deadly epilepsy is. Um, and if we can find a cure for this or a treatment that works, it may lead to treatments for other things as well. The group has started a website and a Facebook page and shares new resources like the Seizure Clusters Connect website and Facebook page. Julie Walters helped found the Alliance after her daughter, Violet, was diagnosed with PCDH19. Being able to go online and see Seizure Clusters Connect on my Facebook feed means that I'm less alone. I see other people going through the same thing that I'm going through. And I think also, as Violet gets older and she's getting on the internet, she's gonna see a community of people that she can connect with, of other maybe teenagers that are going through the same thing that she's going through. For some of these new parents, I think it's uh, a lifesaver to know that there's other people out there 
you know, you're not the only one. You may be the only one in your town, and you may be the only one for your neurologist, but there are other people out there, and we're in this together. It's so nice to compare notes, and it's, because it's so rare, I mean, we are international, we have to find each other all over the world. If she's up in the middle of the night and having seizures and I can't go back to sleep, or I need some reassurance or just to know that I'm not alone, that somebody somewhere in the world is awake at 2 a.m. A lot of our friends don't really understand it, and they never will. And it's only people that, are, that have it happen in their own lives that really understand. My advice to other parents that are newly dealing with seizures is don't be afraid to ask your doctor. Question what they're telling you, get a second opinion, go to a major epilepsy center. That would be, you know, get a pediatric neurologist. If you can, get an epileptologist. You're not alone and working together we can come up with something to improve the quality of life for everybody suffering from seizure clusters. There's an answer out there, we just have to find it. For more information on PCDH19 epilepsy, visit pcdh19info.org. And for more information on seizure clusters, visit seizureclustersconnect.com.